I don't know if I have a good connection, but um, hey, I'm here because a lot of people have been wondering what is going on, and I was really like, I was really, I don't know, I didn't want to say first what was going on, you know, for everybody who follow me, follow us, and um and everything so if y'all want to know then y'all can stay y'all all i want to say is people are not who they pretend to be you know you can have clout and a lot of followers but it doesn't mean you're a good you're a good person or you are as nice as you show it on social media you know um don't get it twisted like relationships and social media are two completely different stuff so no, we are breaking up. We actually are uh, about to have a divorce. So I'm just letting you know. So people just be wondering. First of all, I don't know why people keep saying I am I'm, I am, a bad person or something. Not even knowing me. I've never... Like my friends, people who truly know me know that um, I'm, not a, I'm not a bad person. I don't do people wrong, you know, in general. First... Things that I want to say is people be keep saying, "Oh, Tweezy's so good, but I'm so lucky and stuff." But uh, behind closed doors, yeah, I don't know that Tweezy keeps saying stuff about Ailey. Hey, why are you so ungrateful that I'm here? Uh, I'm already raising another kid. You know, he been throwing that stuff, this kind of stuff on my face. You know, and you don't you don't see that on 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 YouTube because that stuff that he don't that he don't that he don't say you know he pretend to be so perfect but that's not what what it is and uh first when he said about Ailey oh I'm raising another kid he really hurt me especially Ailey was right here she heard that and because she heard that she asked him hey hey are you are you my daddy still you know because you know and I'm sorry because this is just so hurting and uh all this kind of stuff yeah i don't see it and i'm not the kind of person to come and be crying on social media that's not my type but because people just come at me all the time it's like the story with kennedy and i'm sorry to say her name because i don't even want to talk shit or stuff like this people was like hey via jealous and stuff like this but the things that y'all don't know me i've always been working on my own i had my own place i had my own job i was raising my daughter before i even met tweezy i had my own place nobody was doing nothing for me i was on my own and he came into my life and when all this stuff happened with his best friend anyway uh he when he met me he promised me yeah you will see my best friend she's so nice don't worry don't worry she gonna be cool she was even calling us when we was in paris so i'm telling you the whole story back in 2019 yeah you will see uh, when you come here via that'll be so cool we're gonna hang out and stuff like this all right I was like, cool, bet, that's cool. And I was so happy because my best friends here, y'all already know, Chris and Ryan, I don't, I don't even be this close to them no more. I, you know, it's just life happened. For example, people who know me, they know I don't drink alcohol at all. I don't drink alcohol and um, and uh, Tweezy knew that, she knew that. And every time we would hang out at her place, she would say, hey, let's do this alcohol game. So... We're gonna have fun and i couldn't i couldn't really play because i don't drink alcohol you know like if you you don't eat peanut butter and you come to my house i'm not gonna say hey let's do a peanut butter game that's so hurting you know she would come she would come and uh, around and tweezy would say hey let's yeah let's take some some picture and she would look at me and she would say hey we don't match so we can't take no picture she would do a tiktok with me and then cut me off the tiktok and post the tiktok all this kind of stuff you know and i wasn't saying nothing after all this time i didn't say nothing about this whole life about this whole stuff that y'all don't see behind closed doors people was like hey uh she's so jealous of of her and i was like jealous of what like jealous of what you know i have i have my own my whole life in paris like i said um I have my place, I have, I have, uh, you know, my job and stuff. So it's just like, and I was like, well, it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it don't make sense to me. It don't make sense. And that's crazy because I never said nothing. I never said nothing, but I'm so much for women empowerment and stuff that I don't even 
want to throw shit and stuff. I was just taking everything. People was coming at me. Hey, she jealous and stuff like this. But I'm not jealous of nobody. Like, if you do good in your life, that's good. I'm happy for you. You know, I'm I'm already doing my own stuff. I'm I'm studying and that's that's good so that was the first stuff that was going on in la and then one day i was i was go- coming at him and i said hey you don't see that everything that she does i was coming at twizzy she don't she, you don't see everything that she does it's not it's just not nice i don't understand what's going on and he was saying hey you you too jealous anyway she got clout she got money and you ain't that's what he told me and i was like bro that's so that's so f-ed up that you say that to me because i i literally left everything I literally left everything to come and stay in the States with you. You know, I was really like so shocked. I was like, why would you even do me like this? Like, what did I do wrong to you? And then anyway, uh, the next day, despite the fact that she called me a she called me a bitch and stuff, you know, the STD basically. And I was like, oh, uh, that's when I reached out to Twitter and I said, hey, this girl come at me. And he was like, yeah, you know, she crazy. Uh, I had sex with her long time ago and i'm good i know i did all my tests and i was like all right cool cool and then before he came to paris so before uh he came in december 2019 uh i would say maybe two or three weeks before i told him hey we both grown people you know we both adults so if you want to come in paris make sure you do the right thing go get tested for all the stuff i don't want no and I'm going to do the same because I always be caring a lot about my health. So, you know, don't give me no f- You never know. So he was like, all right, bet I'm going to just go and um, I'm going to just go and uh, do all this, the tests and stuff. I was like, okay, I'm going to do, do the, test, the test too. So all my tests came back uh, negative. I was good and stuff. He told me, he called me, uh, I was maybe two or three days. Before he came to Paris, hey, I'm good. All my tests are, are negative, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, then cool. Then he came in Paris. So we was in December 2019. Everything was fine. You know, we enjoy each other. We both grown people. A month later, I started having pain. I started having pain, you know, pelvic pain. So I was like, hmm, this is crazy. This is crazy because all my tests was good. You told me that my, your test was good. So what's going on? Basically, uh, I go to see my doctor, my OBGYN, and uh, she say, hey, girl, you got chlamydia. You got to get, you know, you got to obviously have a treatment. So I come to Twitter and say, hey, I, you told me your test was good. Look, my test, everything is good. So what's going on? And he said, no, I'm good. I'm good. I said, no, you're not. And, and, and I said, how do you know you're good? Did you receive your test back? And he said, no, you know, basically, your doctor in America, when you're good, your, your doctor don't call you. So if you have no call, that means you're good. And I said, but you're not in America right now. You're in French. Maybe your doctor can't even reach out to you. And um, he said, okay, uh, I'm going to check if I, I'm going to order the, the result by letter. So he called the VA because, you know, he a vet. And so he got to call the VA to basically uh, have uh, his results, you know. And they sent it um, to the mail, so they arrived in LA. And at the, at this much, at this time, sorry, he was living with Pedway Tio and Black Charcoal. So I said, okay, call your, call them, call them, call Tio and Pedway Tio. So the guy he opened uh, the result and he sent a picture, and he sent the picture to Tweezy. And the, the result said, you got chlamydia, and I was like, oh, oh, so you you wasn't you wasn't really right, you know, you wasn't basically. You, you was lying to me, first thing. And I was so hurt, I was so hurt, but I was like, okay, you know. The thing is, I didn't blame him, blame him for getting sick. I blame him because he, he lied to me. He could have been telling me, hey, I don't have my results yet, and then we would have used protection, you know, this kind of stuff. Like, it, it's cool. Humans, they get sick. It's not the, being sick the problem. It's to, to basically put other people's life in jeopardy, even if I'm not going to die from this. It's just because I trust you with, you know, I trust you and then you lied to me. You could have told me, yeah, you could have told me, yeah, I don't have my test result yet. You know, we would have done something different. We would have acted another way, but he lied to me. That was the first lie that he did, you know. Anyway, then we got the treatment. So after a few weeks, we was good, you know, that's, that was the first thing. That's cool. So we went to America. This whole thing with his best friend happened, like I already explained to you, um, and um 
and yeah, we was good. <sighs> then if I start talking about some stuff, I'm like, at this point, you know, this is crazy because right now in France, it's about to be one in the morning and I'm just like, bro, I'm just so over everything that I don't give a f no more about saying the truth of just pretending that everything is perfect because this man is really like evil. Um, I gotta say, this man is not what you think he is. He'd be the funny guy and bro. I think some people could actually see in some of my video that I wasn't even feeling it no more. But, um, but yeah, that was just, I got so much to say. I got so much to say, but anyway, that was his birthday. That was his birthday of 2020. 2020, I met her, his grandma for the first time, you know, I met his grandma for the first time. The first thing his grandma told me, tell me when she see me, hey, I don't like your outfit. Uh, then I got, uh, you know, stuff like this. I don't know. If, I don't even know why at this point she just come around first day. I see her and she say that, um, um, then a few days later, we was getting a tattoo on my hand. Uh, and for the people who don't know. So when I was young, I had the name of my ex husband on my name, on my uh, finger, which got covered and now it says salvation on my um on my finger you know and uh I had it redone uh done again in LA and his grandma was here and basically she knew that my ex-husband was violent you know she she knew my ex-husband was violent and then the first thing she said no the, the so the guy so the guy is Ink Millie actually he a fight tattoo artist the guy is Ink Millie and he was uh, doing my tattoo on my hand and um his grandma actually asked, "Hey, uh, is the, ta the tattoo painful?" I said, "Hey, yeah, it's 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 hurting. It's kind of hurting." And she said, "Hmm, you hurting in your tattoo, and you was hurting already in your relationship." <sighs> and at this point, I was like, "Bro, I don't I don't know what's going on. I don't know why people why if all people here are hating me because because she I'm French or I'm you know I don't know I don't know you know this is this is just too crazy, but." A lot of stuff happened. A lot of stuff happened after that. Um, uh, girl, I got so much stuff to say. I'm sorry. I got so much stuff to say. I'm. I'm just. Hold on. Hey, mama. It's okay. Where's your pacifier? It's right here. There you go. There you go. Sorry, guys. I, I'm. I'm. I'm literally coming back, but. You know, Ayla is crying, so. So, uh, hold on. I just don't want to, I'm trying to protect yourself. Don't be so open. No, but, you know, I'm not even going to be open about my, my, um. I mean, at this point, I don't care because I, I just want to do something is is actually leave social media because I never wanted to actually be in a part of it like this. I never wanted to to uh, to be this much on social media and people to just think stuff that are not the truth. And uh, so. Hmm. So yeah, the thing is, the thing is, um, tweeting a lot of stuff about my life, but I don't know nothing really about him, you know, so he knew about my ex-husband and you know, this is crazy because these kind of people, I would call them like narcissist people or pervert or manipulating you and they will make you open, open your, to your life. So one thing is that. Um, Twizy know my mom, my mom had some health, mental health problem when she was young and when I was young too, you know, a lot of stuff happened in my life because of, of, um, my mom and we will, me and Twizy will argue and he will say stuff like, Hey, maybe you crazy. You need a mental health like your mom. He knew my ex husband was violent and he was like, Hey, maybe buddy was right to, 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 to punch you. And when he said that, I just slapped him. I slapped him. He went away. Like he just uh hold on because um his sister calling me but I'm not gonna pick up right now. 
because I'm telling y'all the story. Anyway, <sighs> that's crazy because I'm really not the kind of people to open like this, but I just, I'm just too, too, too tired. I'm just too, too tired. So he would say stuff like this. I got pregnant with Isla and he, uh, when, I, when I'm pregnant, I get this disease that it's called hypermesis and uh, I literally can't do nothing. Y'all seen in the videos, I can't do nothing. I'm sick. I'm just so, 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 so sick. And, um, and I was probably like three weeks, four weeks pregnant, four weeks pregnant. And, um, I was basically laying down, you know, laying down in the bed. Like I was during the whole pregnancy and he would tell me, Hey, you the laziest, f you spend your whole time, uh, you spend the whole time sleeping and not doing you acting like you five months pregnant and we was arguing from the time i was like no i'm just sick you know i'm trying to do my best but i can't do much i can't do much i don't feel good and anything i'm gonna eat i'm gonna throw up anyway and he was like we would argue and he would tell me hey you gotta go back to your country you and your baby you know this kind of stuff and uh i was just so stupid i stayed and phew. that's crazy because if a girl actually tell me everything that i've been through I would say, girl, run away. Like, don't even stay. You know, why would you? Why would you even stay to, 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 to suffer like this? And you know, um, so I told you I slapped him, and I, I'm allergy. I know about this. I know I was wrong, and I still did it. And when I did it, he told me, "Hey, I want. I'm gonna break your neck." You know, this kind of stuff. And uh, he got a lot of anger issues. Like he would get mad out of nowhere. Um. Uh, yeah, he would say, get out of here, don't touch me, and stuff like this. Uh, even before I get pregnant, there was this story. This story about, um, about, uh, so Wuwa, you know, you guys know Wuwa, you know, uh, Dub's son, he actually super nice, super cute, and a super smart kid, and he came around to play with Ailey. So he came around to play with Ailey and Dub. Dub told me, uh, told Tweezy, sorry, yeah, you can take him back. You can take him back at like, I don't know, whatever times, I would say maybe 9 p.m. or whatever. And uh, so I was letting them play. Tweezy was here with one of his friends named Jackson. You know, the guy who do dance and Fortnite stuff. Anyway, he was here with Jackson and um, it was time for me. It was time for Tweezy to bring Wu up back to Dub. And I was like, because Swizzy was here with his friend, you know, LA, he was here smoking. For people who always been asking me if I smoke, I don't smoke. So he was here with, um, with his friend smoking and stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. Just give me Dub address and Dub, and dub number. I'm going to text him when I'm uh, there and I'm going to just bring Wuwa back, you know, back to Dub house. You know, we was literally living, I would say, five minutes away uh, from Dub house. So uh, it was already nighttime. So I took Ailey and I took Wuwa uh, and uh, we went out, we, we went out on the street, you know, walking to Dub House, you know, I had my, my, uh, my GPS on my phone and I was going to, to, to text to, um, to Dub House and I texted Dub, hey, we're like five minutes away, we're living now. And I was on the street and DDG stopped next to us. You know, he stopped next to us and he was like, hey, what's up, basically? Because he's seen, I was with his nephew. I was with his nephew and it was nighttime. So it was, I was like, hey, I'm just taking him back to Dub House. And um, he was like, oh, I bet y'all come in, basically. So I came into his car and I put Ailey in the car and the, and uh, Wuwa in, in the car. And straight, I called Tweezy and I'm like, hey, just to let you know, just to let you know, um... Uh, just to let you know, DDG picked me up because I was with Wuwa. He saw me with Wuwa randomly, and uh, he he took us to he took us to to um, to Dub House. And that's not Twizy become mad as f get out of the house and come straight to to Dub House, acting crazy like what the f you doing with this? And I was like, bro, y'all supposed to be friends. He was like, we're not friends, blah, blah, blah. Uh, would you be happy if, uh, if uh, Kennedy picked me up? I was like, this is absolutely 
It makes no sense because I am outside, outside with his own nephew, his own family, you know. And that's crazy because I told Chuck when I came back, I told Chuck when I came back, I said, hey, Chuck, what did I do wrong? Because as soon as DDG picked me up, as soon as DDG picked me up, I called Tweezy. So, you know, just so he don't, he don't feel some type of way that I didn't tell him, you know, I'm always, I'm always, um, I'm always, uh, Letting you know whatever I'm doing because this is respect. You know, we was already married at this time. And I told him, yeah. I told him, yeah. Uh, I I'm just letting you know so you know what's going on. But I wasn't about to tell DDG, no, don't pick me up when I'm with his nephew, right? I, well, I don't know. Am I crazy or am I crazy? Because you, if I'm with your nephew and you're outside, it's, 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 uh, it's nighttime. And I'm literally going to your brother's house to bring your nephew there. I'm not, it's, it makes sense to me to not uh, just say, hey, no, I'm not going to come in your car. Like, bro, especially if I'm, if I'm letting my husband know, um, I don't know if, sorry. If I'm letting my husband know that I'm here, I mean, I didn't see what I did wrong. Until this day, he said, no, you fucked up this day. I'm like, all right, okay. Um, and then, you know, this day, hold on, I'm trying to see because... That's crazy. I got so much on him. <laughs> I got so much on him because we, my whole, basically, life with him, um, I've been writing down stuff. I was like, am I crazy or not? And, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. So, what happened next? We moved to Atlanta. So, he was basically saying that, um, he was basically saying that, uh, People in LA was so fake. That's crazy because he will talk about people in LA, but he will always hang out with them. And I'm like, this is something I don't do. This is something I don't do because if I, first of all, I don't talk about people, but if I don't like you, I don't hang out with you. And that's it. No matter who you are, no matter, no matter how many, how much clout you have, I don't hang out with you, you know? So, um, he will always talk about people in LA and he will always say, Hey, you know, my real people, uh, in Atlanta, you know, I'm always happy when I got my people from Atlanta and he, when Ayo and Teo are around, I'm so happy. I was like, all right, then why we, why don't we move to Atlanta? Because you always say people in LA be so fake, be so, so much, but you stay here. You stay here. And I was like, yeah, okay, let's go. Then let's go back to Atlanta. I was like, okay. So we sold, uh, Mize in Paris. Yeah, I knew we had, uh, dogs, you know. So I was actually, when we moved to Atlanta, it was probably in July early July, and I would say I was maybe three, three, uh, three months pregnant, so, um, I already overstayed, uh, I already, hey, Chuck, that's crazy that Chuck is here, that's crazy that Chuck is here, because Chuck, no, and I'm sorry, Chuck, you know, I didn't ever mean to cancel you, but, you know, anyway, anyway, um, uh, like I said, yeah, so we move. So Chuck can confirm. That's crazy because Chuck being here, Chuck can confirm what happened with DDG this night when I took Woo up back home and DDG pick, pick us up in the street. And I told Chuck, yeah, uh, uh, did I do something wrong? Why was, was Tweezy getting so... Uh, can y'all hear me? My phone be acting up. It's okay, mama. So I was like, did I do anything wrong? Because um, I let him know and stuff. Uh, and, uh, Chuck will also confirm that Tweezy got anger issue anyway. That's not no new, that's not, you know, he's not the same in, on the YouTube and, hold on. It's posing? I don't know. We can't hear you. Okay, okay. So... Yeah, so like I said, Chuck will confirm everything, but he's not probably not here for that. He's gonna probably like <laughs> this one actually fun is, <laughs> but anyway, um, hold on, cause Ayla is not feeling something. So we went to Atlanta. We went to Atlanta, and uh, I already overstayed. I didn't know that I would still be able. I thought overstaying overstaying in America would cause me so much problem because I overstayed my ESTA. So basically, when you're from France, you don't need no visa to go to America. You can uh, have an ESTA for three months, and uh, you don't need no visa. And um, I overstayed or the ESTA. I overstayed the ESTA, so I thought I would be in trouble if I try to take the plane, which actually wasn't true because we went to America like two weeks ago, and. Um, 
um, but I didn't know, but they was granting uh, automatic, basically renewal of the ESTA because of um, because of um, of uh, how you call it, of COVID. Sorry, because of COVID. Uh, so, but at this point, I didn't know. So we took the a drive. Sorry, we drive to from LA to Atlanta. That was a thirty hours drive. That was a, a thirty hours drive, and um, and uh, so when he was driving, so the way Twizy is driving is have really, he had I don't know about now, nah, not really about now, but he had a really he was driving really fast. Okay, basically he was re- driving really fast um, um, on the freeway, and I was pregnant at this time, and uh, and I was throwing up a lot. But I wasn't even the problem. Um, uh, I was. I had anxiety because when I was young, I had uh, I had a really bad car accident and I had a, a, a stroke. That's what we say, like a little piece of <laughs> that come in your brain. And uh, I had this for like six months, and I was going to the the brain doctor and stuff like this. So I was telling him, "Hey, you know, I get I get anxiety. I get anxiety of people driving super fast. I don't feel good." Um, can you just like slow down a little bit? And then he got mad. He was saying to me, "Hey, you had an accident, not me, because you maybe you don't know how to f- drive." But uh, I was like, "No, it's just I. I'm explaining you why, and you are acting this way." So that's crazy because this is all this little stuff that just he pulled over. Because I told him I, was, I had anxiety. He pulled over in the freeway. So the long interstate stuff. He pulled over and he told me, okay, now drive. And I was like, what? I'm, I'm pregnant. I don't even feel good. I just told you I have anxiety because you're driving fast. He was like, literally driving super fast. And, um, and uh, he said, drive. So I, I, took the, I took, you literally took me out go to the other side and make me make me drive in the middle of the freeway pregnant and um and uh sick and sick you know and plus i had the anxiety so i, d- I drove and i was r- driving so slow i took the next exit and i left the car and i took Ailey and i wanted to just leave i wanted to just leave the country because i was like bro this is just too much this is just too childish i'm just explaining you the reason why i don't feel good in the car and you making it a whole like stupid stuff. You know I'm not even supposed to drive because I'm pregnant. I'm sick. And first of all, when you're French, you can only drive. I think in the, in the United States for like one month with your French uh, driver license. You're not supposed to be driving, you know, all the time. And um, uh, sorry, I'm reading a text at the same time. Okay, so yeah, after uh, he apologized and stuff, and basically, (laughs) if I'm here today, and we had this kid, and we are all that, that means I I stayed, stupidly and dumb, I stayed, but we arrived in Atlanta, we arrived in Atlanta, and um, he was always going out with his friends, that's crazy, because y'all would see him uh, putting... Uh, post and stuff at his friend Ayo and Teo, but I was never around. He won He would never stay with me. Like he would always go out, go out, go out, go out, go out, go out, and all that. And um, one day, one day I would say, "Hey, why you don't stay with me a little bit?" And he say, "Hey, you are controlling me. Uh, stop st- trying to smother me because I wanted to. I wanted to. Um, I wanted to uh, spend some time with him." You know, and uh, after that we moved to France, and you know, all this little stuff, all this little stuff kept happening, kept happening. Uh, I was pregnant, and I was um, almost about to give birth, but it was like the fake uh, labor. So I went to the hospital. They kept me for like two days, and when he was come coming and pick me up. He would argue with the doctor before coming into my room. So he would come to my room. He was already mad from the doctor and say, you, I would say, hey, I would be so happy just to just see him because, you know, that was COVID. So he couldn't even be with me before for the 48 hours as he kept me. And uh, I was so happy to see him. And he's like, hey, you haven't even done your, your, you haven't even packed your stuff yet. 
And I was like, what's going on? You say, hey, I don't want to talk. Let's go. Let's go. And I was like, I was so heavily pregnant and so tired. I was like, but what's going on? And I just started crying because, you know, when you're pregnant, you're just dumb and you just cry for nothing. And he was like, oh, I don't, I can't do all this victim. Then every time I would cry to, with Tweezy because he would hurt me, he would say, I'm acting like a victim. I'm acting like a victim. And, um, Yeah. Like you say, every time he would say, we argue every time, every time we argue, Tweezy leave the house. First of all, he would get crazy. As f- he would say, hey, uh, you acting like a victim. I can't deal with that. And you say, hey, I'm Tweezy. And I was like, in what? He said, I'm Tweezy. I was Tweezy before I met you. And I will always be Tweezy even after you. So all this kind of stuff all the time. And I was like, bro, I was so lost. I was pregnant and Rad came here and I was so sad, crazy. I throw stuff on the floor and i was just so so crazy and that's when he was trying to make me like hey you crazy oh and one thing also that happened in la sorry something that happened in la and i'm really not ashamed no more i was so ashamed to even say it before but everything that he caused me made me want to kill myself and i don't have no i don't have no it's just hurting to say it, but I, I'm not even ashamed to say it no more. And Diamond Nicole was here. If y'all needed somebody to even prove it, and I can say she was a real friend at this point because she she came and had a prayer for me. She prayed with me, and he would probably say, "Yeah, she crazy because she she tried to kill herself." Because every time we argue till this day, because I tried to kill myself, he would say, "Hey, you crazy." As anyway you crazy like your mom so you try to kill yourself bro i can't even deal with that bro you know all this kind of stuff and i'm not ashamed to even say it. it's cool it's cool you know it happened to me and it just made me stronger now and uh so uh you know he will pretend he will pretend to be so perfect in the relationship for youtube for example he would take the kids he would take Ailey to um the playground and record stuff like this. He would take, uh, he would, he would get a uh, present for Ailey to put that on Christmas and stuff like this. Every time it was for YouTube, that would be so perfect. He would do so much stuff, but then for the real, in the real life, he wouldn't do nothing. He wasn't giving me no affection. When it's time to, f- oh yeah, he right here, no problem, but no affection. He wouldn't. He never got me no, nothing for my birthday. He didn't get me nothing for Valentine's Day. I, actually, he was out with his friends on Valentine's Day. He didn't get me nothing for Mother's Day, and I told him that, and he was like, "Yeah, but you know, I didn't know you was on all that. You know, I'm already doing so much for you and your family, for the family, uh, the whole year. So I didn't know it matters to you." And I was like, "You're not doing so much. You're just doing what you're supposed to do. You're just living. You know, you're just doing a life." You're just living your life because everything that you do, even when you say you, you're cooking or helping taking Ailey uh, to school, this is just life that you're supposed to do when you're a man. You know, I'm not asking you for much. And um, and you, that's when he said again, but you're an ungrateful bitch or stuff like this. And he would say about Ailey, and that's why I said Ailey was right here. And she said, anyway, I'm already, you're ungrateful because I'm, ra- I'm raising another kid. And I was like, this is just so rude that you say that. This is just so sad, so mean, because I never asked you to even be in this life. You choose to be here. I never forced you. And he was like, yeah, uh, maybe it's mean, but isn't that true? Uh, she, don't come out, she don't come out my ball sack. That's what he told me. She don't come out my ball. And then he did like, she don't come out my ball. She don't come out my sack. So she's not my kid. But, and then I asked, them, asked him after. She asked him, hey, like I said, she asked me, yeah, is, is Tweezy still my daddy? And she know that she always she have her father too because she called her father Papa, you know. And um, she was also calling Tweezy Papa when she was talking to him about him uh, in Fr- to French people. But um, yeah, that was just the, the last thing that basically happened. I spent the, the whole trip, the whole trip, I paid for the whole trip for everybody to go in the States, you know, to, for everything. I paid for the whole trip that we went to Amsterdam and I took him to Amsterdam just because I know he smoked weed and he likes weed. So uh, that I was hoping that it would make him happy, you know, and, uh, it, we were supposed to invest a lot of, like, I would say 10,000 euros. I mean, I have 10,000 euros in my account that I want to invest and, um, 
and a few like we was in America, we was in America and uh and I got myself a new ring, you know, a new wedding ring because uh because I never had no wedding ring and he never got me a ring so I got it for myself. It's it is it's so sad that I even have to get myself my own basically wedding ring and you it cost me two thousand dollars and he got mad because I hey when it's time for you to do stuff for yourself you do it and I was like I'm like it's been two years we together almost I never got nothing for myself maybe two times I got a wig maybe I never go do shopping you know you always ask me for money for your weed I always give you money for the weed you always spending like five hundred six hundred seven hundred dollars a month for your weed and you blaming me because one time I got myself a ring $2,000 just to show people that I'm married to you. It's not even something I got, you know, I've not, I never got no like bags or, you know, stuff like this. And, uh, and basically, um, yeah, what was like three days ago, four days ago. Cause I, like I said, I'm, I'm now studying computer science. So I got some books, coding books. And uh, he got mad because I ordered $100 of books to learn, you know. He was like, yeah, you always use the money. And I was just so, so over it. I said, hey, it's not going to work anymore anyway. So he left, got mad. And uh, oh, also, one last thing that happened in America to the trip, the trip in America. So he was going out every day. He was going out every day to his friend's house, okay, uh, Ayo and Teo, and he was always snapping it, and that's crazy because my friends in France they would they would text me, hey, uh, you good? You, I never see you with Twizy. <laughs> Why? So one day after he went out three out three nights in a row, I asked him, hey, you don't want to stay here with me and watch a movie? Uh, and um, he was like, ah, you know, um, no, nah, I rather I was rather go and see my friends, and I was like, but I'm heard that you never want to spend time with me. And uh, he said, and he said, um, so you're asking me to pick me to pick between you and your friend. And I was like, that's not asking you to pick me. But every time you go see your friends out, you only go see friends that are single. So they don't even live the same kind of lifestyle. That's normal that they hang out every day. They don't have no family, but we're married. You, I don't want you to hang out every day. I never tell you that you can't go out. But, you know, one time or two times a week, maybe you can stay with me. No, he would never stay with me. I would cry, be hurt and ask him to stay. He would be like, hey. Stop doing the victim, and I can't do all that crying. You know, I'm the funny guy. And uh, we went to Six Flags. That's crazy. We went to Six Flags. And I've never been to Six Flags, so um, I wanted to do all the rides. And there is one ride that is called the America Screaming, Worst Screaming Things or whatever. And I told him, hey, I want to do this ride. And he was like, no, I don't want to do it. And I said, oh, but... Um, I never did it. I've never been there, so I want to do it. And um, and he said, yeah, but we can do it later, you know, when my cousin here, so his cousin Preston was supposed to come and, he, and he's with his wife Shay. And uh, I was like, but you know, the the like Six Rag is so big, we're probably not even going to gonna come. Um, we're not even, we're not even sp- probably going to come back to this area, so let's do it. And then he, uh, he said no. And uh, you could see on my face that I was upset, not like, not mad or nothing but you know upset because i've never done it so of course i wanted to i wanted to do it and i wanted to do it so he said oh now you're having an attitude i was like what you mean he said hey uh i came here to have a nice day if you're not happy blah 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 just go and do your ride and i was like you know i i i just i'm just i just wanted to to do the ride with you you know we never been there and um we never been there, and that would be cool. And he said, do, go do it yourself. And I said, okay, so give me the flash pass so I don't have to wait the line. He threw the flash pass on the floor, and I took it, and I ended up in the ride on my own. And this is just, I'm telling you the story, but this is just so sad, bro. You know, it's just so sad that you just, I planned the whole day. I planned the whole day to just have fun, and he ended up just, just don't even want to do a ride with me, you know. It, it didn't even, he didn't even, like, it took like two minutes to do the right, you know. Um, yeah, and I, I went out the ride, and anyway, after that he came back, apologized like he always do, and then um, 
And then that's it sold. Oh, yeah, the last thing I said was the book in Paris a few days ago. And uh, I just say that's that's just that's just too much, you know. That's just too much. And literally yesterday, that's crazy because I was like, am I really crazy? Because I tried to kill myself because of this relationship. I slapped him one time, two times, sorry. I'm not even ashamed to say it. I slapped him two times because he told me, yeah, maybe your ex was right to... to to beat you and stuff like this and i was like you're going too far i know i was wrong for that but it's okay i don't have to even be ashamed of it he would keep calling me crazy because i tried to you know i tried to um i tried to end my life and stuff oh for people who i was asking what happened to our dog coolio i had to give him away because he was beating the dog so much that i had pain for the dog you know i was like i need this dog need a better life so I just gave the dog the dog away because he was just beating the dog because the dog was pooping on the floor. That's a baby, so what you expect? Anyway, now you have the answer. Um, anyway, uh, I don't even know what to say no more. Uh, I was th- just I was thinking so much that I was crazy. That I literally reach out to Tweezy ex-wife. And I just texted him, texted her one thing, and I said, "Hey, uh, I hope I'm not bothering you, but can you tell me if Twizy had any toxic trait?" Yeah. And without even her telling me, without even me telling her, sorry, my story, she said, "Hey, girl, I'm so happy you reached out to me, but you gotta know, I already know what you're going through, and um, and Sash, you gotta know that only Antoine can change Antoine." And um, and uh, he was really controlling. He would lie about the smallest stuff and get caught. Him caught himself in his lie. He believe himself his lies, his own lies. He would believe his own lies. And um, and um, she told me, yeah, he is so controlling. Everything have to be his way. He is so smart. The way he talk, he would make everybody believe he's so perfect. That's crazy because my family. Was thinking everybody. It's still this day, people are like, "Hey, hey, you you so lucky to have Tweezy." And sometimes I'm like, "Bro, I've been nothing but right to this man. I've been nothing but right. I always helping him. Tweezy got no job. People think Tweezy got money, but Tweezy ain't, ain't got. Shit. He he owed twenty thousand to some people in the states and stuff like this. So he's so happy out there actually. Um, and um. And I got a job, he would call me lazy, and because, I, I don't know, he wouldn't do shit with his life, and I would be the one to be blamed. And I'm like, I'm like, people that are telling stuff about me, not even knowing the whole situation, saying, yeah, you're so lucky to have Tweezy. But Tweezy would say, yeah, he, he accepts you, he's a real man, he accepts you with your daughter. But the thing is that Tweezy be saying about my daughter, hey, she don't come out my own ball sack, she ain't mine, she, I'm raising another kid. And that's crazy, because I repeat this like two or three times during this life, but because this is just, he just like hurt me so much by saying this, you know, that's just, that's just crazy. You know, he's just, he just hurt me so much. He just hurt me so much. And now, uh, literally two, three days ago, so not even, I would say yesterday, I'm saying three days ago, yesterday I reached out to Tweezy wife and she told me, yeah, yeah, I'm not bashing him, but, he a big liar. Uh, he will pretend for the internet that uh, he's so perfect, so nice. He will act like he's the perfect guy. But everybody that actually talk to him, everybody that actually know him for real, know he got anger issues. That know he get he get crazy for nothing. That's crazy because even his friend from uh, from Atlanta, uh, L V R D Faro, would say that he got anger issue, and he would say, "Hey, since he know you." He's getting better. You really helped him to get better. But the thing is behind closed door, people don't know that he be treating me like he be taking control of everything. He would get crazy because I listened to DDG song and I said his song is fire and I don't have to be ashamed of it. His song was actually fire. That's cool. I don't, I mean, why? I don't know. I would say, I would listen to everybody. I would say to everybody and out of everybody that I would listen to, he would get mad about him. And it didn't make no sense to me. It didn't make no sense to me. So that's just, yeah. And well, actually, I learned yesterday that one of 
a Tweezy big sister best friend had sexual intercourse with Tweezy. And and I just learned that. Oh, sorry. There's some weird nose in my house. And um, yeah, she had a sexual intercourse with Tweezy. And the fact that the fact that um, the fact that uh, I told him that I told Tweezy sister first. She was acting like she didn't know nothing. I don't know if she was lying or no. Oh. But then the girl in question, her best friend, start, start. She posted, she posted something on Instagram, say, "Hey, I'ma shake that like I wanted to shake that or something like this." And now, and then Tweezy sister laugh on the picture, and I'm like, just grown people don't do this like this, you know. Don't do like this. So, yeah. No, but you know, I'm Twizzy sitting right next to her is a prank. Twizzy not here at all. Actually, there's nobody in my house. My my doors are locked because you know, you know the type of that's crazy because people think so much good stuff. That's crazy because the people who are actually good people will will say about them. And the the bad person, people will just say they're perfect. He already left the house, you know, he already went out. uh, He already left the house like two or three days ago. He come back every day to see the girls, but that's it. Well, I think that's it for for the most part, and um, that's crazy because yeah, like I said, like I said, he really not the kind of people he will he will he would just pretend to be. You know, I'm all for supporting people that do good in life. I'm all for supporting like friends that want to do good, and he tried to make me like, hey, you jealous of my best friend? I was like, what best friend? Oh yeah, one thing she did, his his best friend. We was using her P.O. box because she said, hey, y'all need a P.O. box, okay. And basically, um, basically, um, she would say, uh, yeah, I'm going to call you in, in one hour so we can get the stuff from the P.O. box. And she would ghost him the whole day. And I was like, what best friend do that? All this kind of little stuff. That's crazy because she, she would say, hey, let's, uh, let's all hang out and go to Benny Hanna truck, you know, the restaurant. And then an hour later, you would see her and some other friends uh, do some snap. In Benny H- the Benny Hanna truck, and she would text me, "Hey, sorry, bro, I forgot to text you." Like, who, who best friend forget to text you? So all this kind of stuff, and after all that, that's crazy. Because after all that time, I was like, should I do a YouTube video? But I don't even give a fuck about YouTube no more. I don't even, I never even give, a I never even give a fuck about all that. And people just, just like no. Hey, mama. Yeah. People just be like, bro. No, I can't call Rad because he went to Rad house. And Rad is basically thinking he's so perfect too. Because the thing is, Nobody could actually see what I was seeing, what I was living. Nobody could see it. Because even, even on YouTube, he looks just so perfect. So Sometimes I was just so tired of doing YouTube, like I said. But he would just record everything to put that and pretend to be perfect. But as soon as the camera is over, he would be like, oh, babe, that's cool. Yeah, that's over. That's enough. That's enough. He would never be, he would never give me no affection. Never give me no affection. He would not be, like I said, I never had no present for my birthday hold on never had no present for uh valentine's day or mother's day and that's crazy because i 
<laughs> gave him a present for Father's Day even before he became an actual father. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I I just hope that like, y'all now understand the whole situation. And I'm just pleased, so tired of people just pre t telling me that I'm so, uh, all this that I've, because I never talked about no, nothing, you know, I never talked about nothing. He would actually, like, tell me, please don't say nothing about of everything, about what happened even between you and Kennedy, how bad she treated you, you know, don't do that, don't do that. And pff, all this kind of stuff, but he treated me the, the worst way. People think he's so nice. He was actually my worst relationship. I bought him a car, like people say, yeah, I bought him a car. He basically just used me for my money to ask to have weed every month because he don't have he don't have money at all like people i wasn't with him with the money for the money anyway you know i had like i said i had my own stuff going on i had my job i had my place i didn't need no nobody paying me but sometimes it's just cool you know to have just even a card for mother's day i didn't have nothing i didn't have nothing at all so <sighs> okay so i'm just going to um in this live now because I'm working tomorrow anyway so um, I got to let you guys know uh, let you guys go sorry and uh, and that's it bye bye